Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. This is part two of the video on making a boring bar here. Where we left off, we're turning the outside diameter here of the stock piece of 01 down to about 750. And we just replaced the new insert. So let's continue on. Okay, let's see if this does any better. I bet it will. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's do a very quick light sand. Let's see where we are now. Okay, we're at 754 and if 754 and you know a few tenths. So let's go. I, what I did was I I moved my cross slide right back to where we were last cutting, which is which lets me take uh, this in two thousands, which will bring us four in, which in theory should still leave us a few tenths over, which would be I think exactly where I want to be at. So let's take this final cut here. Same thing, I'll come back as at 41, just to make sure if we need to cut again. Do a quick sand. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. 750 and 3 tenths. Last thing I'm going to do uh, in this chucking operation is just use a file and break this edge right here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go now part, uh, part it off and then cut the end off in the bandsaw and then we can chuck it back up in the lathe and do some work on the end here. Okay, got the part chucked back up in the forward jaw. We're going to now turn this face down so we get 125 here. See where we measure out at. Okay, we're at 200. Okay, real quick, we're uh, we're at about 200 on the uh, on the dimension here. We want to be at 125. 
I don't like how the, the tolerances read out on this wheel here. They're in fractions, and I've always been a fan of using uh, indicator. So I put one on the uh, carriage stop. We've got it set at zero. We're going to take one more pass just to confirm we've got an accurate number, and then we we'll, should be able to take the finish pass at pretty spot on to 125. This part isn't isn't uh, critical at all, but it'll be good to know uh, this method will work in the future for when we do need to uh, be dead nuts on. Okay, so like I said, I've got the dial set on zero, but that may not be perfect. So what we'll do is we'll come over, let's see here, so we, we need about 75 total. We'll come over 40, uh, we'll take it easy. We'll come over 20, take a few passes. You know, I do have this uh, extended out here a ways uh, because I wasn't able to chuck up easily on that smaller diameter. So uh, we're in no rush here. Yeah, I don't think I trust the, uh, uh, well, it doesn't make sense to use a mic here. I've got a slight, uh, in, I've got a slight um, fillet on the inside edge here, so I'm not really going to get an accurate reading on uh, with the mic there. So this has given me 178 or so, so we'll take another, let's go 30. The nice thing, of course, about this is that I can actually go the other way, uh, you know, to the right if I needed to get the tool out of the way and come back and not worry uh, really much at all about the accuracy. Okay. So 142. So 17, let's go for it. So 5, 10, 15, 16, 17. Really happy with how the tool's cutting. And perfect. Look at that. Right on the money. Um, good, so um, I've already had some good comments on part one I saw. One of the questions is, you know, you're gonna have too much deflection with this much uh, sticking out and, and you know, cutting the tool in half. Look, you guys may be right. This is my first time doing this. Um, this is the design I'm gonna go with. We'll see, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But, you know, there's a first for everything, and uh, I think it'll do okay, especially on the, you know, aluminum and softer materials. And, uh, you know, hey, I'm having fun. So let's now hop over to the mill and mill the half away. We've got our piece in a three-quarter inch 5C collet, in a little 5C collet holder here. 
we're going to come find our zero, but first, uh, on speeds and feeds, I use G-Wizard as always, which I really rely on. We're going to use a 4 flute, 3 8 inch carbide end mill at 1750 RPMs and 9.8 inches a minute. Uh, according to G-Wizard, that will be a little less than a tenth of a horsepower, so no, certainly no problem there. It will be about 170 service feet a minute and just about half a thou of chip load for tooth. It's probably a little bit of a light cut, but um, I'm a little bit of a wuss when it comes to cutting new metals and new steels like this. Um, so we're just going to take it easy. We're going to do full depth of pass cuts with, um, with uh, you know, 30 thou width passes. So we'll be using the whole tool, but uh, stepping in slowly. So let's, uh, let's find our zero and see how it goes. Okay, we'll throw our end mill in, so let's do a sanity check on our tool path. Okay, yep, I'm happy with that. Okay, let's adjust the camera here. Okay, here we go. I forgot to mention, I decided to cut a shorter uh, relief distance and not go all the way uh, to the shoulder, but rather, as you can see, we're stopping part way in. I did a quick uh, Google search and the um, buffer overflow error was due to hard drive disk vibration in the camcorder. But maybe because I had it uh, mounted on a uh, Manfrotto Magic Carp right to the table. So I've got it on a tripod now. We'll see if it does better. You'll also notice I've switched from a full depth of cut to um, cutting it in two, two depth passes. I was getting too much chatter. More importantly, right at the end, you'll hear a little bit of chatter when it comes and makes a full radius cut there. It's not too bad now. I'm okay with the level of it on the uh, on this uh, half step cut. We'll uh, fast forward here for the rest of this so we can move on. All right, perfect timing. Uh, the wife actually just said dinner's on the table, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Let's see what we got here. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> we'll grind that top there, so certainly no problem there. I like my radius. Yeah, let them break that edge, no problem. Okay, now... Okay, so I'm actually going to wrap up part two now because I actually would like some advice. I want to know, and I don't, I've been thinking about this, and I don't know what makes sense, whether I should grind the tip now or after I heat treat it? I think the answer is to heat treat it first. Obviously anytime you're grinding uh, a piece of high speed steel or or sharpening another tool it's already in its heat treated state. Um, 
my but I was just thinking to myself but if you when you grind it you sometimes if you are I guess this this isn't really a fair point because if you if you're grinding to the point where you dump so much heat into it that you temper or anneal the steel then uh, you're just you're just being uh, doing a bad job of grinding it so I think the answer is to heat treat it first but uh, I figured I'll see what folks have to say um, the other thing we'll do is we will obviously only have one of our ends here as a uh, cutting surface but I, I will end up grinding off the bottom and the back side so that we can get the tool into a smaller diameter hole when we want to use it but um, I left them on there for now because they'll actually be good points to practice grinding the radius we want in our bar on the uh, actual cutting side. Uh, so that's it for now folks. As always, if you've liked this video, please do me a favor and give it a thumbs up and always comment below. Um, check out our Facebook page too. Uh, we tend to post some decent stuff on there if you're on Facebook. Uh, otherwise, take care folks. Thanks.